And to think, the government would have us believe that these massive structures were destroyed by 10,000 gallons of jet fuel. However, eyewitnesses, video footage, and a little common sense quickly refutes that claim. The second plane hits the South Tower between the 78th and 82nd floors at 9.03 a.m. Barely hitting the southeast corner, the majority of the jet fuel exploding outside in a massive fireball. Yet, this tower collapses first even though the North Tower was hit straight on and had already been burning for 18 minutes longer. Galileo's Law of Falling Bodies calculates the time in which an object will travel a certain distance in complete freefall. Distance, d, equals 16.8 times time in seconds squared. The South Tower was 1,362 feet tall. 1362 equals 16.08 times 84.7, or 9.2 seconds. The Twin Towers came down in nearly free fall speed. 200,000 tons of steel shatters into sections no longer than a couple feet long. 425,000 cubic yards of concrete is pulverized into dust. Thousands of lives are extinguished instantly. So what brought down the World Trade Center? Let's ask the experts. Van Romero, Vice President for Research at New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology. My opinion is, based on the videotapes, after the airplanes hit the World Trade Center, there were some explosive devices inside that caused the towers to collapse. The collapses were too methodical to be a chance result of airplanes colliding with the structures. Ten days later, certainly the fire is what caused the building to fail. Why would Romero change his mind so suddenly? Hyman Brown, civil engineering professor and the World Trade Center's construction manager. It was over-designed to withstand almost anything, including hurricanes, high winds, bombings, and an airplane hitting it. Although the buildings were designed to withstand a 150-year storm and the impact of a Boeing 707, jet fuel burning at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit weakened the steel. Kevin Ryan, Underwriters Laboratories, the company that certified the steel that was used in the World Trade Center, in a letter to Frank Gale of the National Institute of Standards and Technology. We know that the steel components were certified to ASTM E119. The time temperature curves for this standard required the samples to be exposed to temperatures around 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit for several hours, and as we all agree, the steel applied met those specifications. Additionally, I think we can all agree that even unfireproof steel will not melt until reaching red-hot temperatures of nearly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Why Dr. Brown would imply that 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit would melt the high-grade steel used in those buildings makes no sense at all. This story just does not add up. If steel from those buildings did soften or melt, I'm sure we can all agree that this was certainly not due to jet fuel fires of any kind, let alone the briefly burning fires in those towers. Ryan's statements directly contradict statements from so-called experts, which claim that 2,000 degree heat inside the World Trade Center caused the towers to collapse. Days after writing this letter, Kevin Ryan was fired from his position.